Welcome back to Dale Does Service Now. I'm your host, Dale. In today's scenario, we're going to talk about maybe you're a sysadmin, you've been building global for a long time, you've always wanted to start using Studio and Source Control, but you never were sure quite where to start or how to do that. So the answer is global apps. These have been around a few releases. Today we're going to be doing this on Tokyo, but this already applies to the last few years of releases. So what's a global app? Great question. It's going to look just like a scoped app, except there's no cross scope security and you can't use delegated development. However, some great things you can do back up to source control, deploy using app repo, and you can actually stop using update sets. So a little word of caution though, um, to create and manage these global apps that might require a developer to actually need the um, admin role in your dev environment, but your mileage may vary. I'll talk about how to do it without admin anyway. So on to the demo. First, we're gonna need to get ready and then actually make the app, put stuff in it and then publish it. So to get ready, just make sure you've installed the plugin global application file management. If you want to allow a single user to do this in dev, you'll need to give them that SNG app creator dot app creator role, as well as the SNG app creator dot global role. If you want to set everyone up in dev to do this, you'll need to give them the SNG app creator dot app creator role again. Um, and you'll need to set the system property SNG app creator dot allow global to true. Let's move on to step two, the fun part, actually making that global app. So here you can see I'm Dale, platform administrator. I'm in the dev environment. I did already make sure I had the plugin installed and I'm doing this with the admin role. So there won't be a huge need for me to really change much. So let's go ahead and actually create our global app just to get us started. And really think of the global app like a container um, for any of the global files that you want to put in it. So let's create an app and we'll call it um, the Dale Now Incident Management app. Let's say I've been doing uh, incident management administration and changes for years and I want to start tracking those a little bit better. So I'm going to continue in Studio Advanced and I'm not actually uh, going to do the rest of the guided app creator. I'll go ahead and just open up uh, my app, Dale Now Incident Management. So I'm gonna go back to the platform view. I'm gonna check out my uh, scope picker and you can see it looks like I'm in a scope called Dale Now Incident Management. And it does get its own update sets if you wanna use them. And you can see, I'm gonna turn off my security admin. Oops, shouldn't be, shouldn't be operating with that. Um, so now that I've created my global app, let's actually take the next step, which is to transfer some files to it. Um, so to do that, let's go take a look at business rules on the incident table, which I've already kind of pulled up here. You can see I created this custom one called custom business rule from five years ago. It's set to active false. There's not actually anything in it, but we are gonna use it as an example of how to move things around. So let's take that one and we're gonna check the box click in our actions and click move to applications. I'm just gonna type Dale now and there's our global app and we'll move that right into it. So now you can see the application says Dale now instead of global, but what about maybe an out of the box business rule? Let's say we want to modify this business rule out of the box. I can actually move that to my uh, Dale now application. And now you could consider that global file uh, under the administration of the Dale Now Incident Management app. If I go back to Studio, you can see there's my, my two business rules. I'll go ahead and open them up like that. Just so you can see inside of my business rule, there's not really anything going on here. It's not even active. Um, but let's take this other business rule that's out of the box. And let's say we wanna change the order to 101 like that, we can. And that change will now be part of our global app. Let's say we continue to make additional changes to it like that. We'll just put the value back the way it was. And now we've got some changes and some stuff in our app 
uh, to deploy. So we've transferred some files to it. So step four would really be to publish this to the app repo. Uh, we could link it to source control, but I'm gonna save that for a different video when we're gonna talk about CI CD. So in this video, we're just gonna publish to the app repo. We'll call it initial commit, and we'll just say submit. So if you've seen my previous app repo video, you'll know that once that step is complete, that's all you have to do to then go to my company applications in the next environment and install it. So with that, I'll just show a quick model of what we've done there. And it's the same one I have in my app repo video. The developer, whether they're building global or scoped, whether they're using the next experience or studio, they're gonna publish that to app repo and then their platform admin is gonna install it and test and prod. Now again, you can give delegated rights to someone else to install this and test and prod. So you don't always have to have the admin doing it, but if you're new to this, you may have the platform admin do that at first. So if you like the content, you wanna see more, please remember to like and subscribe. If you have comments on this video or suggestions for other videos, you know how to put them in the comments. Thanks.